morning, good morning, good morning. It's not Sister Christine. Told ya. Hit the share button, invite your friends. God is good. Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, Senior Leader of the Awakening House of Prayer, founder of the Ignite Network. 
course, author of our devotional Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still, small voice of God. Today's devotion titled, Don't Be a People Pleaser. My, 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 my. Don't be a people pleaser. And here's what I heard the Lord say. Don't be a people pleaser or make decisions based on the backlash you expect from others who don't get what they want from you. People will pull you right out of Father's will and into their own will if you'll let them. There's a difference between walking in love and being done. Politely refuse that which you know is not my will, no matter who is pressuring you. Ask me what I would have you do. Obey and then let it go. Leave it to people. Leave the people to Father. Keep your head up and move forward with what Father told you to do. Now that is good Holy Ghost advice. Amen. Today's scripture references Colossians 3, 24, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17, and Acts chapter 5, verse 29. And the prayer starter, I don't want to be a people pleaser. I want to be a God pleaser. Help me avoid the temptation to submit to the will of man when you have called me to do something else. Help me to choose the God things over the good things man proposes. My, 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 my. Now that is a mouthful right there. Father, we give you praise. We honor your holy name this morning. You are magnificent and worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of our total devotion. You are worthy of being followed from here, there, and everywhere. Wherever you go, God, we will go. Whatever you want us to do, God, we'll do it. Whatever you want us to say, God, we'll say it. God, we are completely surrendered to you and your will. We will not be people pleasers or people chasers, but we will set our hearts to be God chasers and God pleasers all the days of our life because you alone are worthy of our absolute dedication of our undying devotion. God, it's all about you. You saved us. You picked us up and dusted us off. You rescued us from the pits of hell and you are worthy. (laughs) You're so worthy. We cannot express enough with the words of our mouth how much we love and honor you, God. And we want to love you more. We want to honor you more. We want to walk in that hundredfold obedience. Oh God, we know we all fall short of the glory of God. We all fall short. We all do things, say things, think things that we ought not. But Lord, we want to get better. We want to draw closer and closer to you. We want to be cleansed from all unrighteousness. We want to be sanctified and consecrated. We want to do, God, what you want us to do. We want to be, God, who you want us to be. We want to do it your way, God, today. We thank you, Lord, that we will not uh, seek uh, the, uh, the, 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 the accolades of man, but we would seek your affirmation, God. We would not seek the honor of man, but we would seek the, 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 the honor that you've bestowed upon us to carry your gospel, to carry your spirit, to move in signs and wonders. What greater honor is that to represent our King, to represent our Savior in the earth, ambassadors of Christ, ministers of reconciliation. Oh God, would you help us today? Oh Jesus. Many years ago, I remember being in the rafters of a Joyce Meyer conference. I was just newly born again, maybe a year or so. And I remember just so clearly sitting there up in the rafters. And I heard the Lord say something to me in that moment that I did not understand, but it's come flooding back to my mind in this moment. And he said to me this, he said, you're a minister of reconciliation. Now I did not have enough word in me to know that that was in the Bible, but we are all called to be ministers of reconciliation reconciliation, reconcilers to, of people to God, purveyors of the gospel of truth. God, would you help us today to keep first things first, to remember that instead of saying to someone what they want to hear, we would say to them the truth in grace with love, God. Instead of uh, petting somebody's flesh up in the church who has demons and emotional issues, instead of just uh, petting them on the head and saying, oh, you're going to just be fine. We would 
would deal with things that are separating them from you. We would deal with the root issues. We would deal with the, with the demons. We would deal with the emotional health. We would deal with those things first in ourselves and then for other people. And then even out into the lost and dying world, reconciling people to you fully in Jesus name. Help us Lord to focus on the ministry of reconciliation. You yourself are the greatest reconciler. You reconciled us to you. You are the greatest justifier. We are justified in Christ. You are the greatest of them all. And we praise you and we honor you this morning for who you are. Thank you, Lord. 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 We praise your holy name this morning. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Help us to get things in right order. Help us, Lord, not to walk in a fear of man, but to walk in the fear of the Lord. Not to be afraid that someone's going to get mad if we didn't do what they wanted us to do, but to be concerned about how you think and how you feel about a thing. To be so sold out to your gospel. To be so sold out to your person, the person of the Holy Spirit, the person of Jesus Christ, the person who is our Heavenly Father, to be so sold out to who you are and what you want done that we would not flinch when man doesn't approve. We would not draw back when somebody doesn't like it, but we would press in with greater determination, knowing that even if all of hell comes against us, God is for us. And if God is for us, what does it matter who is against us? We will not want walk on eggshells any longer around people because we're afraid of angry outbursts. We will not any longer uh, pull back and keep quiet when God is saying to speak because we're concerned what people will do or say to us or about us. God, give us a Holy Ghost boldness today, God. Give us the courage that Ezekiel had. Give us the courage that Ezra had. Give us the courage that Joshua and Caleb had, God. Infuse your courage into our spirit spirits, that we would not pull away from the hard conversations, that we would not pull away from saying no in O. Oh God, we act like sometimes that's a curse word. No, we can't just say no. Why can't we just say no? How come we just can't say no? God, help us to say no to those things which are not your will. But Lord, help us not to get over into the other ditch. Help us, Lord, not to just begin saying no to everything and everyone. Help us, Lord, to do what the Bible says, to, to help people when it's in our power to do it, to, to, to lend when it's in our power to do it, our time, our counsel. God, help us, Lord, to walk in your will. Help us, Lord, to be so sensitive to your spirit that we would know immediately what we're to do. And help us, Lord, not to be afraid anymore of saying that no word. <laughs> I want you guys to get this balance today because I'm feeling in the spirit as I'm praying that some of you are just going to go start being selfish and self-centered and people are going to, nope, nope, not doing that. Nope, nope, not going to church. Nope, 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 not, not tithing, not sewing, not giving to my church. Nope, 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 nope. It's a, no, we don't want to get in a ditch, but so many people in the body of Christ don't know how to say no. Of course, if you've committed to serving in your church, you need to be there. Of course, if you said you're going, let your yes be yes and your no be no. If you've said yes, you're obligated. If you've said yes, you need to go ahead and follow it through. If you've said yes, but then next time be more careful about saying yes when you should say no. Don't go around now breaking covenants. Don't go around now breaking your word because you decided you heard me on the broadcast and you've got a license to back out. If you've said yes, you better follow through. Let your yes be yes and let your no be no. Jesus said anything beyond these is evil. So, Father, help us, Lord, to be people of our word. Help us, Lord, to be people of integrity. Help us, Lord, though, not to overcommit. Help us, Lord, to get our lives in balance so that we can do the God things and not just the good things. Help us, Lord, not to be afraid of the backlash that comes when we say no. But help us, Lord, not to be irresponsible and commit to the wrong things because it's what we want to do instead of committing to the right things that you want us to do. God, I just see that so clearly. There's some, some people that are listening to me and you just, you're just, you, you've, you've got it backwards. You're saying no to all the things that you really should be saying yes to. And you're saying yes to all the things you really should be saying no to because they're things you like. 
I was just talking with Prophet Vanessa last night, really, really in the wee hours of the morning because we got into London and there are just certain things I'd rather not do, but it's not about what I want to do. There are certain places in the earth that if I had my choice, I wouldn't necessarily go there. If I had my druthers, if I had my perfect say in the matter, but the reality is, and what I told her was, I don't get to choose. I don't get to choose. I don't get to choose. Jesus told Peter that, you know, in these days you're going where you want to go, but there's going to come a day when you're going to have to go where you don't want to go. This was in the context of the conversation of what happens to John. What happens to John? What ha Peter said, what happens to him? John told John, Jesus told Peter, you're going to have to suffer many things for my sake. You, 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 you know, when you were a child, when you were young, you did what you wanted. You went where you wanted to go. But when you mature in the days ahead, you're going to have to do things you don't like for the gospel's sake. It's not about what we want. It's not about what feels good. It's not about what sounds good. It's not about what makes us look cool. It's not about saying that you did it because it sounds awesome. It's about doing the things sometimes that you can't even tell anybody you did. Oh, Oh, it's about not tooting your own horn. It's about letting another man exalt you and not your own lips. It's about dying to self. I do all kinds of things I'd rather not do every day, but I learn to love the fruit. I learn to love the peace that comes in God's will. All of us do things every day we don't want to do. Well, most of you don't like going to work every day. You don't like your jobs, but you have to go. But at least when you do something that your flesh doesn't want to do in Christ, at least when you do it for his sake in obedience to his will, there's a grace, there's a peace, there's an empowerment that comes with it. And you learn to be satisfied and content in doing something that your flesh doesn't want to do. And sometimes your soul doesn't want to do. So when I'm praying about not saying yes to things you should and not saying no and not, not, do, you know, look, you got to be led by the Lord because your flesh will take a message like this and your soul, your carnal nature will take a, a prayer meeting a prayer message like this and say well I'm not going to do that at church no more because you know I just feel like I, I just don't feel led make sure that you're being led well I just feel like I'm overloaded in my secular job so I'm too tired on Sundays to go to, no 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 uh-uh uh-uh die to say Jesus said pick up your cross and follow me Jesus said if any man does not forsake mothers and sisters and brothers and he's not worthy of me if any man wants to be my disciple, he must die to himself. He must. So, Father, help us today really to get this, to say yes to what you want to say yes to, even if we don't like it, even if it doesn't feel good, even if, it's, if it seems tiring, even if it seems expensive, even if it doesn't look like it could possibly be fruitful. God, help us to put our hand to the plow that you've called us to put it to and not to just go the easy route, not to take the, the, the broad gate that leads to destruction, but to be committed to, come on, this is a grow up prayer call today. Is what you call apostolic prayer. Father, help us today to, to be willing to go where you want us to go, whether we really want to go or not. Help us to put our will in line with your will, even if we have to crucify our flesh to do it, even if we have to lay down our niceties to do it. God, help us to be willing, the, good, the willing and obedient will eat the good of the land. Father, we want to eat the good of the land. We want to walk in perfect peace. We want to walk in joy unspeakable and full of glory. But all of that comes from being in the center of your will. Even when there's warfare, there's joy in the center of your will. Even when there's warfare, there's peace in the center of your will. Even when there's warfare, there's hope in the center of your will. Even when there's warfare, there's grace in the center of your will. So Father, help us to stop overthinking and overanalyzing and deciding what we like. Well, I'd like to do this. Well, I wouldn't like to do that. When pastor asks you to do something, don't think about whether you'd like to do it. Think about whether God would like you to do it. Come on now. Somebody's, somebody's not amen in as much as God's wanting you to. Come on, get in agreement. Get in agreement. Get in agreement. It's not about whether you want to. It's about whether God wants you to. Dear God, my carnal nature didn't want to get saved, but God did. God wanted me to get saved. Your flesh didn't want you to get saved. Your flesh didn't want you to surrender to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He didn't want you to confess with your mouth. He didn't want you to, 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 to come into the... Your flesh didn't want... Your flesh wants to go to hell. 
There's no good thing in your flesh. There's no agreement with God in your flesh. It's a carnal nature. It is at enmity with God. It's a, it is, it is a, this flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit wars against the flesh. But aren't you glad that you surrendered to Christ? Aren't you glad that you let him take you up out of that place and, and set you in, in Christ seated at the father in heavenly places? Aren't you glad? Now, this is how we have to live the rest of our life. Well, I didn't sign on for you to tell me I need to die to self. That's all right. God knew. Yeah, you did sign on for that. You just didn't know that's what you were going to get. You didn't know that's what you needed. Amen. We all need this. I'm preaching to myself. I'm praying for myself. I'm not picking on you. Well, I didn't, I didn't know. No, this is what we need. We need to grow up because we'd be a lot happier without all the complaining. We'd be a lot more content without all the kvetching and the moaning and the groaning and finding fault with everything and everybody. We'd be a lot more peaceful if we just get our mind on him. Isaiah says that he who sets his mind on me, I will keep him in perfect peace. If you're not in perfect peace, beloved, your mind has, flaw has gone somewhere else. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, today. Help us, Lord, today. Help us, Lord, today. Help us. The apostolic is a grow up grace. It's a grow up ministry. We got to grow up. We got to lay aside childish things. There's people dying and going to hell every day because, and, and we're complaining because we had to, we had to substitute for the greeter at the church on Sunday. And we don't like to be the greeter. We like to sit back and, and, and just, you know, work on the slides on the PowerPoint for worship, but we had to be the greeter today. Oh my God, I might not go next Sunday because they made me be the greeter today. Give me a break. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you need to grow up. Every joint supplies. You might not get to supply where you want to supply. It's about what he wants. Be a good sport. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't know what's gotten into me today except the Holy Ghost. Praise God. I don't know what has got me stirred up except the Holy Ghost. Amen. We've got to grow up. Every time I get outside America, I see how immature so many of us in America are. So the American church is so full of comfort and it's so seeker friendly. Dear God, can't even pray in tongues in some Pentecostal churches anymore because they're worried about the seekers that are coming in. Oh my God, are you serious? Are you serious? You got to have, you know, <laughs> Disneyland and the kids church and slides and rides and, and buzzings and or else the, the parents aren't going to want to bring the babies. Oh, well, really? There's nothing wrong with all that, but it, <laughs> my God, seriously? You, know, you go to Asia, you go to Africa, they don't have all that. You know what they have? They have the Holy Ghost. You know what they have? They have the saving gospel of the glorious light of Jesus Christ. I'm not against all that, but my goodness. It's fine if you want to have fancy slides in your kid's church and jumbotron screens. I'm not against that. Understand, I'm not criticizing that. But when we attain to that, when, our, when, when as pastors and leaders, we feel like we're less than if we don't have that, then we've missed the reality that the Holy Ghost is all that we need. Jesus Christ is all that we need. He's all that you need in your life. You don't need a fancy house and you don't need a fancy car. I'm not against that. But you don't need that to be happy, beloved. What are you testifying? 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 We need to be going around testifying to the goodness of God, to the grace of God, to the mercy of God, to the healing power of God. Luke 8 and 39 says, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. We need to shift our mouths. We need to shift our minds. We need to begin to testify around and about us to a lost and dying world. What it is God has done for us. What it is God is doing for us. What it is God is going to do for us on that day in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when he takes us up into heaven when we trade immortality when we trade mortality for immortality when we exchange these fleshly tents for something glorious for something radiant for something that can never get sick or diseased again we thank you lord today we're going to give testimony we're going to begin to share everywhere we go about the goodness of god in the land of the living psalm 71 verses 15 through 18 says my mouth will tell 
tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day, for their number is past my knowledge. Oh, come on now. With the mighty deeds of the Lord God, I will come. I will remind them of your righteousness, yours alone. Oh God, from my youth, you have taught me and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those who come. Come on. This needs to be our mantra. This needs to be our mission to testify of the goodness of God, to stop complaining and acting like the world, getting in a line at your favorite coffee shop and kvetching to the person behind you because the line is so long. Oh my God. What if we just talked about the goodness of the Lord? What if we just talked about what God has done for us? What if instead of complaining and fighting and arguing with one another, we just began to testify to one another of how God brought us from a mighty long way, how God has brought us and changed us and moved us and shifted us and healed us and delivered us. What if we just stopped complaining about the pastors and complaining about the food and complaining about the crying babies in the sanctuary? What if we just begin to testify to the goodness of God in the land of the living? What if we just began to sing his praises? What if we just began to invite his presence to do again what he did the first time because beloved the word testimony in the Hebrew doesn't just mean to say it again it means to do it again what if we began to testify more about what God was doing what God has done and what God is gonna do than we did about what the devil said ah. what if we begin to testify less about what the devil is doing testify less about how the devil brought destruction testify less about how the devil spoke this and that to our mind and stole our money and stole our babies and stole our health and stole and killed what if we began to testify more about the goodness of God testify me means to do it again when you testify to the goodness of God angels show up when you testify to the goodness of God the Holy Spirit is at attention he's listening he's recording all of our words in a book the watcher angels all around us they're 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 attentive when you talk about but when you talk all the time I'm not saying ignore the devil you know that's not right I'm not saying ignore the devil. When we talk all the time about what the devil's doing, what the devil's doing, what the devil's doing, what the de that's how we focus. That's what we shift toward. So yes, we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Yes, we acknowledge there's an enemy that's roaming about like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Yes, we get it. We understand it. We don't ignore it. We're going to acknowledge it. But what if we talked more about the victory of the Lord? What if we testified more to how he got us out of the last mess and how he's going to get us out of this one? What if we testified a little bit stronger about the miracle working power of God, the delivering grace, how the arm of the Lord is not too short to reach down and grab us up out of this mess yes we acknowledge the the enemy yes we acknowledge what people have done David did it throughout all the Psalms he went on and cried and watered his bed with tears and complained to the Lord and then at the end he always would say but the Lord will show up for me but the Lord will not forsake me but the Lord will reach down and rescue me but the Lord will fight this battle for me David complained and he cried out he acknowledged the situation he acknowledged the issues he acknowledged the drama he acknowledged the betrayal he spoke about it to the Lord but then he turned around and said my God is great my God is bigger and he testified to the saving grace the power of the Almighty God and guess what happened he was always delivered from the trial oh father help us today to shift our mouth to shift our testimony help us today God help us today Revelation 12 11 we quote it all the time they have conquered him or they have overcome him by the blood of the lamb the word of their testimony your testimony has power your testimony releases Holy Ghost power and what else do they do oh my share what have we been praying about they loved not their life even unto death they were selfless they did what God wanted to do. They overcame the enemy by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. Jesus already conquered the devil. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb, by the work of the cross, by the, the, by the word of their testimony, and be, by being unselfish, by following the Lord's will, by being so obedient that if it even cost them their lives, they were all in. 
Beloved, we're so far away from this today as the church in the West. We plead the blood. I plead the blood. We do all that. But then we testify. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. Oh, this is never going to change. That's all right. What are you testifying? And then we're not selfless, preferring others. The Bible says to be selfless, preferring others, to honor what we don't do that. We backbite and we, we moan and we groan and we point fingers and we accuse and we launch character assassinations. We act like the accuser of the brethren and our testimony is evil and we wonder why we're not happy. We wonder why God's not moving. We wonder why nothing has changed. God, help us today. Set a guard over our mouths. Help us, Lord, today to speak the truth in love. Help us, Lord, today. Season our, our speech with salt. Help us, Lord, today to begin to testify to what you're doing, to what you've done and what you're going to do. To acknowledge the enemy, to cry out to you if we have to, to water our bed with tears if we need to, to wonder when it's going to change if we have to, but then to have the wherewithal to be selfless enough to understand that this is not just about us, that our walk affects other people, that our, our, our crisis affects other people, whether they care or whether they don't, because we're a body and when one is hurting, we're all hurting. So help us, Lord, to get it together, to pray for others, to get our minds off of ourselves, to go help somebody else when we're hurting so that we can continue to sow the seeds of restoration and reconciliation. They can sprout up in our own life. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. What are you testifying? What are you testifying? Come on. This was a grow-up call today. You know, we have these now and again. They usually end up leading to massive breakthrough calls. Because the, the Holy Spirit sometimes will cause us to check ourselves, will cause us to examine ourselves, will cause us to look and say, you know what? Now, some of you won't acknowledge that you've done these things. Some of you get mad, offended, and never come back on the broadcast until the Holy Spirit shows you that he was right. But that's okay. Sometimes we have to be confronted with things that we're doing that are holding us back from our own breakthrough. This is why whenever one of these, maybe every several months, one of these uh, uh, confrontational calls will come and it's like a check your heart call. Like, okay, am I selfish? Am I, am I complaining too much? Am I, uh, what am I testing? This is why, this is why beloved, because God is wanting to break you through, but there's something many times it's not even always the devil. Sometimes it's us that causes our own selves to be stymied. So don't get offended. If I'm not talking to you, then I'm not talking to you, right? If I'm not talking to you, I'm not talking to you. Then pray for all these other poor people on the call that just are miserable sinners like us. Amen. Just go ahead and just get an agreement. If it's not you, don't get offended. Hey, if it's not you, it's not you. But sometimes we don't know it's us. Sometimes the Holy Spirit's trying to convict us and we're not getting it. So he'll use a messenger like myself to come in with a hammer Pop, pop, pop. The, Bob, the Bible says that the word is like a hammer. The Holy Spirit's the convincer. He's the convictor, not me. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, today that we will examine our testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Speaking of which, I, I received a testimony from our Sunday service. Apparently, there was an issue with people logging in because somebody attempted to take down the site. Devil's mad. And I'm hoping that it gets fixed. You can go watch it. I don't know if everybody had a problem, but a couple people reported they couldn't sign in. Sometimes that's because of their own. They forgot their password. I have no idea. Um, I'm able to sign in just fine, but uh, I know my password. So anyway, I got a testimony from Sunday service. Listen to this. Because the power of the testimony, the testimony means to do it again. I'm not going to tell you it's from because that's private. But this person emailed and said, uh, I just wanted to send a praise. I brought my family to your church on Sunday and my husband just informed me that we will be getting money back from the tax man. This never, never, ever happens to us. And he said, we were just praying about this on Sunday. Really cool. It's great timing because he has shifted his business and well, things take time to start making money. So this is really good for us. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you for JL and JLM. And for Ahab, listen, that's what you do. You testify, testify to the goodness of God. We were prophesying our way out of the Valley of Dry Bones on Sunday. I really hope you can get in and watch this message. It's the PM service was the stronger of the two because of the, uh, the people were pulling it out of me. The AM service was all right. It was fine. But the PM service was electric because the people were pulling out of me. 
what the Lord wanted you know it depends on who's pulling but if you can go listen to that message you'll be helped a lot prophesying your way out of the valley of dry bones I think you should be able to get it I'm gonna check it right now but testify listen if you want to sow a seed maybe you need to, to sow your to sow, let your seed do some prophesying for you maybe you need to let your seed testify for you maybe you need to sow a testimony seed and say Lord I'm changing my 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 language I'm changing my thrust I'm changing my perspective I'm gonna say yes to what you want to say yes to you need to sow a seed today if you can help us help us help us help us to take this gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth as a matter of fact if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ he died for you he paid a price for your sin God loves you and we all sin we all mess up we all make mistakes we all, we've all probably at some point most of us have lied or cheated or stolen something or had a bad thought about somebody the Bible calls this sin and even though God loves you he created you for fellowship with him he loves you completely so your sin separates you from from the Father in heaven but Jesus came God sent, according to John 3 16 God sent his son into the world to pay the price for your sin he died on a cross he was beaten and bloodied crucified and separated from God so that you would never have to be and if you were the only one in the world to ever accept the gospel he would have done it just for you because he loves you and if you want to uh, have peace with God today if you want his help I want you to pray this prayer with me father in the name of Jesus I acknowledge that I'm a sinner I don't want to be separated from you anymore I need your help I accept that your son Jesus Christ came and paid the price for my sin I accept that he died on a cross and that he rose again on the third day and that he is seated with you even now I accept the work of the cross and I ask you Lord forgive me save me for your son's sake and I'll be free in Jesus name amen amen if you're listening to this and you prayed that prayer go to Jennifer slash peace with God if that website's not working I don't it's not finished yet but many people will hear this replay go check that site if not email me and let me know that you prayed that prayer info at jenniferleclair.org we actually had somebody rededicate their life to the Lord on the broadcast from two days ago that's why I'm doing this it takes two minutes and I want all of you believers to pray with me if you want to sow today I want to give you the opportunity to do that maybe you will get some money back from the tax man maybe you've been through a dry season maybe you need to let your seed prophesy for you in the valley of the dry bones I don't know what area of your life has been dry and crusty but you can let your seed prophet name your seed name your seed name your seed tax refund name your seed whatever the Lord is leading you wherever you're seeing dryness in your life name your seed and help me today to get this gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth there are eternal rewards for you can sow at jenniferleclair.org slash give jenniferleclair.org slash give yeah I am in the online campus my 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 mine works fine I think it's just people who forgot their password that are having trouble write your passwords down Saints or get your Firefox browser your Chrome browser to save it for you amen it's always helpful I got a list where I save mine because I can't remember them all jenniferleclair.org slash give you can become a partner there or you can sow one time seed there jenniferleclair.org slash give you can also use the text to give 754-701-2161-701-754-701-2161 let's keep all the inappropriate conversation off Facebook please I'm feeling in the mood to block somebody don't distract people from praying and from receiving what God is is trying to do jenniferleclair.org slash give paypal.me slash jenniferleclair paypal.me slash jenniferleclair text to give 754-701-2161 text the word pray 754-701-2161 text the word pray you can use the cash app dollar sign Jennifer LeClaire dollar sign Jennifer LeClaire cash app dollar sign Jennifer LeClaire you can also use the PO box PO box 30563 Fort Lauderdale Florida 33303 Fort Lauderdale Florida 
33303. You can send a check, a money order, a book, a Starbucks card, a thank you card, a testimony, anything you want to write. You can send that there to P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to sow into your kingdom, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, help us, Lord, to embrace the work of the cross, the work of the gospel in our own lives, because you died to set us free, and we are free indeed. Help us to walk in the reality of that freedom today, in Jesus' name. God, I ask you to multiply this seed back to the giver for your glory, in the name of Jesus. Lord, cause, cause, uh, cause, Lord, your, your people to see the fruit of the seed manifest in their lives. Whatever they've named their seed, God, take it to mind. Take it to heart, God. We know that if we ask anything in your name according to your will, you'll do it for us. So help us, Lord, today to always to pray in your will today and every day in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I bless all of my Awakening House of Prayer leaders, all of my Ignite Network leaders, all of my Awakening Blaze and Awakening House Church leaders, intercessors, as well as the uh, (laughs) staff and the volunteers, all the different. Lord, I just say bless them indeed. Enlarge their territory. Let your hand of power rest upon them and keep them from evil in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God is good all the time. Amen. We have a few, a uh, couple just quick announcements. I've got to go and get ready to be somewhere. I am in London and uh, we've got some meetings here. I will be uh, at uh, in Croydon on Friday night for the prophetic release tour. If you can get here, if you have to fly, if you'd have to take the channel, a train, a plane, an automobile, get to Croydon, go to my, uh, eventbrite.jenniferleclair.org I'm sorry, yeah, no, it's jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com if you are in or can get to London on Friday night, jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com you're going to want to be there, it's going to be electric, we are making some special announcements as well about getting involved in the house of prayer that we're launching here, so I want to inform you of that as well, get involved if you can come to London. Dr. Cindy Trim will be with us for our seventh year anniversary conference, the Watchmen and Warriors Conference in South Florida. That is going to be a couple of months from now. Get registered. There's a fee for it. It does cost a tremendous amount of money to bring people of her caliber in. So we're asking you to help us defray the cost of that by uh, a small registration fee. You can register there at jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. It's the Watchmen and Warriors Conference with Dr. Cindy Trim and myself and others will be there as well. God is good. The School of the Apostles launches April the 26th. You can sign up for that at schoolofthespirit.tv. It is still on early bird for about another week. There's also an installment plan there for you or you can subscribe that way, schoolofthespirit.tv. This is not just for apostles. I call it the School of the Apostles because you're learning about the anointing the apostles carry. You have an anointing, but the most powerful anointing of any believer is the believer who is fully equipped with an apostolic, prophetic, pastoral teaching, and evangelistic grace. There's a grace of the apostle which most believers do not seem to possess because they have not sat under the teaching or received impartations from actual apostles. If you go back to my YouTube channel, you can watch a... uh, a video I did on how the apostolic grace helps you muscle through trials, how the apostolic grace helps you muscle through trials. The apostolic is a building grace. It's a warfare grace. It's a transformational grace. It's a visionary grace. And you want to learn about that because you want to be able to operate and, and, and receive that. First, you've got to receive it. You can't expect an apostle to act like a pastor. School of the Apostles, you're going to want to go get involved in that at schoolofthespirit.tv. I will be back in Atlanta as well as Charlotte, Orlando. I'll be with you on March the 22nd. Go to my Eventbrite. Every, every, all of my own events are there on Eventbrite. Releasing Holy Ghost Power to Life's Most Difficult Circumstances. That's there as well. The Seer Zone, Becoming a Leader People Want to Follow. Uh, healing Rooms, if you're in South Florida. The next one is March 14th. There's just so much there for you to get involved in. And God is good. Remember Israel, tinyurl.com slash Israel with Jennifer. 
We've got to uh, get on that if you're going to go. You can, do, you can do that as a tour company that's doing it. They're handling all the admin, okay? I'm not handling the admin, so don't ask us. Ask them. Uh, they're on the page tinyurl.com slash Israel with Jennifer. tinyurl.com slash Israel with Jennifer. I'm going to do a prophetic prayer tour. It's going to be off the charts. We're going to do some things a little different than other tours do. Why? Because I'm different, and the Lord has given me a different assignment in the earth. So we're going to be doing some different things, doing warfare praying. I'm going to be imparting to you, praying with and for you. Uh, we're going to, yes, of course, we're going to see the Garden of Gethsemane and the, uh, you know, the Sermon on the Mount. So we're going to see the things we need to see. Uh, but we're going to actually take a spiritual journey instead of uh, just a, a, a sightseeing tour. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna tap in. Uh, to the Holy Spirit. And I believe that Jesus will encounter us there. Um, I know last time I went there, I had an encounter with the Lord, even though it wasn't an ideal, uh, an ideal journey in many ways. I was there as an intercessor, um, interceding for a bunch of lost people that I, that I didn't realize that was why I was there till I got there. So this time will be a little different um, for me as well. And for you, tinyurl.com slash Israel with Jennifer. You're going to want to go ahead and get uh, your deposit in for that so that you can be on the roster. We will only take so many people. I'm not going, I'm not trying to take a thousand people or 500 people with me. All right. So please go get registered as soon as you can put that deposit down, get it going. Uh, if you're interested, you can read more about it there. If you have a uh, question about the actual tour itself, you can email us, but if it's about, uh, the technical part, just go ahead and email the, uh, the tour operator there. Amen. This is the tour operator that works with all the largest uh, ministries and they do a great work and they have a great, great, uh, admin team that handles all this. Amen. God is good. I don't know what else I'm forgetting. Probably that's enough for you to digest for the day. Remember the mornings with the Holy Spirit app is out there in the Google play store, as well as iTunes mornings with the Holy Spirit app. You want to quickly be able to find the past, uh, uh the past, um, uh, broadcast just real quickly. They're there at your fingertips. Other content as well. The Morning's Holy Spirit app is there for you. The Ignite Network app is out there for you. The Jennifer Lick. There's just so much. If you get on the app, it'll help you to find things more quickly uh, in some cases uh, as well. So God is good. It is 1146 a.m. London time and I am going to go. I bless you and I will, will be back with you tomorrow. I will be back with you tomorrow, Thursday. I will be back on the broadcast. Don't miss it. It might be the breakthrough day. God bless you.